to heaven. Heaven. Damn, bro, did the silent drop. Oh, shit. Speaking of, I, I want to give the right credit. So when I was talking about the silent jump on Ascent a while back onto the bike, Crystal Gamer Plateau Arc. Yeah, this is Crystal Gamer's tech. So this turns out to just work. So if you have a second bind for jump, like many do um, on your keyboard, it's actually just very effective to go into your controls, take that second jump. Mine is caps lock. Don't mind why mine is a weird key. And take your walk key and also double mind it. And this will let you just silently jump for free like you literally just press that button look at that like i just silently jumped no effort no effort you just press that different button and you silently jump around at full speed like, did you see that i just silently jumped to this flower pot from over there yeah it, there's like no downside i tested it in all of the different scenarios it doesn't affect jump throws at all so you could have your normal jump bind minus scroll wheel and then your secondary jump bind you should dual bind it with walk because it just it becomes your silent jump key for any jump you want to make that's silent just press that one like it's actually crazy hey woohoo jin here did you know that i stream every weekday doing vod reviews and playing ranked if you enjoy the videos the best way to support me is to show up live if this video was just uploaded it's very likely that i'm streaming right now all of my coaching is free but that means i need to make money in other ways please consider supporting me with a discord subscription if you can afford to do so i run many live events for my tier 3 subscribers as a thank you for letting me pursue my passion every day at 2000 subscribers i'll be booking a flight out to eu and to APAC to play in houses on your servers. Thank you for supporting me. Enjoy the video. You're kind of cooking, though. Like, your worst game is a game where you filled onto Initiator, which is not surprising. Scream with good players more, encourage them to clip moments where they felt you failed them in some capacity, talk constructively about what they wanted. Yup, that's important. Relatively unaware of the position you were teammates versus yourself. I can already tell you've been grinding this. I guess this these were like over a month ago. This was way better in the the in-house that I played with you. Keep in mind enemy aggro's frequently on you have to get a frag more often than not. Your teammates have advantage second engagement. True space when the teammates needs more work. Be vocal in your second in line. You test less space. You're alone without a buddy. Bet. Vocal in your second in line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Attack. You're not paying attention to habits of defenders. Attack is a game of patience. Slow play. You need to become extreme, extremely explosive after keep open secure. Okay, okay. Heaven, oh heaven. Holy shit, that's a smoke. Push the T if you can. Okay, who's you? I'm putting it as quickly as I can. All right, all right, let's, let's talk micro. If you can. So right here, it's better to stay in the smoke. If they peek your your guy, you, you swing out and kill. Um, The moment you peek out like this, okay, it's actually awkward for your sky to trade you if they come around this way. Uh, It's very awkward for her to peek into this trade. So you'd stay in that smoke until this dude started burning, and then, and then you come out with her to keep scaling. I'm putting it as quickly as I can. Oh. Okay. I'm going to boot up Valorant. We're going to get into like some of the hyper optimized shit that you're going to see this in pro VODs after I point this out. Like whenever you watch them, like when you're dead. So there's this concept of whether or not they know you're pushing something. And the way you push something, if they know you're pushing it versus they don't know is very different. I'm sure that makes sense. Like, for example, we were watching a Derek Sofa VOD yesterday and I said he wasn't going to use his recon because his location wasn't known. And then later on, his location got spotted and he immediately burned the recon. Like, that makes sense. Of course, he doesn't want to give away his location, but then he uses recon. So here, our sky is giving away that we're pushing screens. Totally fine. But because it's known that we're pushing screens, we need to push it a bit differently. So one of the biggest differences between like a pro level player or a semi pro level player and like a radiant player or one of the like big predictors is the amount of bullets they have left at the end of a round. The better players will always have less bullets left on average, which seems almost counterintuitive because it takes them less bullets to kill people. But you probably get what I'm talking about. Like this is why they nerfed gun magazines on the Vandal and the Phantom because spamming was so prevalent in uh, higher elo. I bet if you were like below Immortal, you didn't even notice this change. Like maybe once it, it affected you. Anyways, your location's known and you're scaling here. You should always try to like pre-fire this angle because effectively it's just free, the free value. Like after the flash, you just pre-fire some bullets and then like start scaling up because there's no reason not to pre-fire those bullets. Uh, your location's already known. That makes sense. Uh, I would like whiff this pre-fire more than half the time. But you got to understand that's fine because there's, there's no downside to pre-firing the bullets. 
Yeah, make sure you don't crouch when you hold this angle. Are you crouching right now? Or you're totally crouching. You're reducing the effectiveness of the angle. Yeah, you were. You were crouching. I can tell you why you're crouching. I need to go on to breeze. So this is this is the angle. It's pretty common that you can crouch here to hold mid. And what you're doing when you're crouching is you're taking this big deviation between the back wall and the front wall, and you actually shrink it a bit by crouching. Essentially, let's have two different heights. These are our two different heights here and here. This is crouched and uncrouched, and they will be looking at two angles over here where this is head height and this is head height. So the distance perceived between these two from the taller guy is a lot more dramatic than the distance perceived from the lower guy. Notice the lower guy, when they're aiming at this further angle, they're almost already on the closer angle. When you're higher up and you crouch, you can it's like you're trying to align the two angles so it's easier to hold or hit the shot if they peek close. So crouching here makes a lot of sense, but it only makes a lot of sense because it's an odd angle because um, people are going to clear up here because people are going to clear up here already. You're not throwing anything away by crouching. However, in the split angle, because this flower pot uh, is very uncommon, people don't pre-aim it, their cross is going to be too low if they peek you. And so the crouch is um, detrimental. TLDR, if they expect you to be up high, crouching is totally fine. If they don't expect you to be up high, you want to be standing because um, you'll, your head will be further from their crosshair. Damn, you have a daycare lobby or some shit. Ooh, I'm going to go unheal. Guys, <laughs> okay, okay. To fight this guy... You can fact check me on this Poland, so you know I'm not I'm not talking out of my ass. I genuinely do this. Instead of peeking mail, I've I've peeked mid for mail sides so many times, and I've watched enough VODs. You actually just want to ping here, you don't even expose. And you just spray. Like just shoot bullets through this thingy. Like don't even peek out. Just shoot some bullets and then come out. It, it's like so so broken. I'm just gonna tuck on side here. Just swing off me. Yeah, it's probably better to play high low. Um, you are giving slight angle advantage to Reyna here. If she's like really careful about it and she spots you, she can pre fire and come over here. And she does have um, potential of winning this round. But you got to keep in mind you're playing against some of the best players in the world. There's a non zero chance that they, they find this if they're going for the clutch. I don't think they're going to go for the clutch, but it's way more consistent. Like any tier two team is coming right here and they're playing high low. It's just way better. You come high low and then you make sure it's clear who's breaking the rain of flash. Kevin. Yeah, she's going for it. Flash? So now you're yeah, see you feel obligated to like peek out because you know your angle's awkward. Wait, sorry, here. Take my gun. What are you nading here? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna nade hell and then I'm just gonna stash. Hell. Okay. So they don't play hell much. I don't think we've seen them there. And we know Killjoy plays A. You want your nade to break her util. If you bounce it off the wall here. Grenade! Like this. It'll break all of the bullshit. Throwing it hell. Like, let me see. Let me see your lineup. Wait, Who's going to break Bushy Pop? I'm, I'm just going to see where this nade lands. Grenade. I don't think that would break it. Give me somebody. They they just nerfed this ability's damage against Util. And that's like right on the edge of his damaging radius. I think the Killjoy Mollies are one shot though. I think I missed through it. Grenade! Uh, so chat, to be clear, if we're just talking about breaking mollies, Grenade! this nade is going to break all of them, though. Like Ugh. any, it's going to break anything over here and it's going to break anything close and you start further up. I guess if you're trying to satchel out, it's roughly at the second building edge. Grenade! Yeah. It will do more into hell. All right, back to the VOD. There's definitely a difference between these two nades. I'd say if you're purely going for maximum molly breaking or like trip breaking from Cypher, you bounce it off this wall. If you're going for maximum like hell coverage, this nade you're throwing is better. <laughs> what is this? What is this? What is this? Nah, 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 nah. I'm allowed to do this. I'm allowed to do this because I'm bad. You're not allowed to do this. Satchel up. Satchel up. It's no good if Hooch is doing the satchels better, you know? Unfortunate. I can't fight with you. Okay. You need to clean those up. Yeah. 
Is there a reason we're not nading? Okay, I'm down for Boomba. I think we could have taken this fight a lot better. Look so like at some point here, because you're unwilling to peek, because there's a lot of guys, which makes sense. I think we should be throwing a nade in some capacity. You, you can easily nade um, to block this like exit. Okay. We, bot. Like, we could just be throwing Uto and getting like infinite damage. That's what I was out here lurking in my my custom. You flash too? <laughs> Bro just went. He's close, he's close. Wait, how do I know? Oh, he gets two. I'm mad. 120 sky, sky 1 HP. He's close, he's close. Wait. Okay. You flash through? This is really close, tough. But like right here, you've got to see this guy. You've got to understand they're getting. Um, This guy can get cleared from multiple angles. This is the exact pattern. Is sort of in your notes. Enemy aggro frequently on you after you get a frag. I mean, this isn't a frag, but it's essentially a frag, right? You made contact. You took an engagement. Your your omen's about to get an advantage second engagement. Exactly as labeled here. And I don't think you recognize that. I don't think you notice what your omen's doing. But I've got a shortcut for you. You're good enough in the game. We're high enough elo that you can basically expect your teammates to do this shit. All you need to do is recognize if a given uh, fight can be taken multiple ways. Like if you can realize that somebody could do this from your team, then you don't even have to like check if somebody is because uh, somebody will. Somebody will do something about that guy. So when you make contact here, it, it's like way better to chillax. Like nine times out of 10, is, this guy's going to get like giga screwed. Like they're stuck over here. There's a smoke there. You, you just like chill. You could even like spray, hold them in. And I, I think, uh, okay, we're too slow. Look at the mini map. If we had like an A lurker and we're defaulting and we're down to like go A, I think it makes sense to fall back. But off this pick, bro, it's going to be like one guy, one, one. And it's not going to be the killjoy. Uh, we'll look at the timeline. Like, Killjoy is going to be A with a plus one. And so you can hit two dudes with no Sentinel pretty easily here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. They're not even on B site yet. It's like this dude pushing up. Killjoy's way over here on A. As far as I'm aware, there's no like crazy good Killjoy ult for the B retake, especially if you have um your nade up. Yeah. I want you playing more explosively off of um your contacts or your kills. You're not pressing the issue fast enough. Who do you watch play raise on this map? Poland. Who's your guy? Man, I don't think we're going to see any like slow B main picks. Because Jing doesn't really go B main. And you see how he takes space like way more aggressively than you though? Like I'm pretty sure if we looked at like your jet on Ascent and we compared it to like Zekin's jet on Ascent, you'd be playing similarly aggressive. But for whatever reason, your raise is way more passive than your jet. Do you, do you agree with my like statement there or do you disagree? Like that, that's what it feels like when I watch your, your jet VODs versus your raise VODs. I like that you start the attack round slow. Like I actually think it's better than what Jing does in a lot of these rounds. Like here they're calling a contact. I fuck with this. Uh, I think Jing does get lazy in solo queue. Right here though. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Like we're gonna pop A. A million percent. Let's go, let's go. You see? Like they immediately off the kill, they're like, bet, time to pop. And this is what your raise in particular is missing. I, I feel like if this were a jet VOD, you'd be dashing off of the, the kill. Like if you got this pick on jet, you're probably like, let's fucking go. You're calling for the omen flash. You're going to do your thing. Like their smoke's not even down yet. Like it's such a slow smoke. Oh man, wait, you, you don't play controller, do you? Not much. You can actually like infer the location of this guy based off of how long it takes for this smoke to appear. Some of the better controller players, you got to be careful. They will delay their smoke on purpose to give you the wrong idea. Because of how long Omen's smoke is taking, you like know that he uh isn't on site. Like you just know he's not on site. Because the smoke from Omen on site right here would have come out faster, like way faster. You know what I'm saying? If this guy's playing here, Cover going out. He can smoke that within like two seconds of Reyna dying. One or two seconds. Like super fast. But if he's playing like mid ropes or some shit. Shadows traveling. 
it takes dramatically longer. Like, dramatically. Sounds weird. Middle. You smoke mid, smoke mid. Across, across, across. Yeah, that's good. Good nade. Yup. One more on me. I'm, trying to help you. Oh, I'm backing up, leaving, leaving. Yup. Getting this. What the fuck is behind me? Oh my god. Three. Oh, oh what happened here? He's looking at you. One enemy remaining. One more on me. I'm trying to help you. Oh, I'm backing up, leaving, leaving. Yeah, I think at this point we can get more vocal to our sky. Um, sky players usually buy heal on pistol round, usually because it's so high impact. Can you get info here? Yeah. Nice yeah. running back. There's one heaven. Or there's yeah, nothing. Fuck no. Yeah, you can. They smoked me off. Could go ropes. I think we continue to yeah, push. Yeah, KJ ropes. KJ. Still on I played this. this. Okay, okay, we played this differently. So the, I, we deviate a lot here. So I anticipate, like, they know you're B main, right? They know Raze is B main. That's the call. And you're going to break this dog. It's lit. This guy has no idea that Omen's here. So I think your job is to get this Omen into a winning position. I think the problem with pushing the sky is these guys scaling out B heaven are definitely going to come to pinch you, B main. And if they come that route through B main, they're going to see Omen. Agreed. So I think you break the dog and I would immediately be looking at sight to like come out of main, get my one and die because then they're going to mentally clear B main in their head. I think that's like the win criteria for this round. So I would I push out B main to get wider than this omen. I come from here and I come across and I would look to fight these guys in some capacity, like even with the orb, if you want, if you think you have time to ult out. Does that make sense? I think you could set your omen up here for like big success. But because you go to fight this guy, the omen's location is going to get revealed. Like, for sure. Fight this guy, man. Yeah. Definitely didn't have time to take the orb either. Yeah, an omen gets cleared. Makes sense. Never occurred to me. Hmm. How do we make it occur to you? Because it's a really good play. It's like a super good play. Like, for this guy. It's sort of in the line of... Your teammates have an advantage second engagement. It's like this same concept, but like instead of adapting to when it happens, you force it to happen. Like it's like any time somebody's tucked in a corner, you should recognize this pattern. Uh, I was playing in houses the other night, as I do, and we played a breeze game. And one of my teammates came into this corner. Oh no, no, no this wasn't in houses. No, I was playing um, five stack with hecking. Yeah, you know, wait, I've got her POV. I got invited to like some unrateds with the the dudes. Bet right here. It's literally this round. All right, I'm playing with I'm taking with Jody Masayoshi. We're we're having fun, and Corner J goes to tuck in this corner. This corner is someone big for me. Thank. You. And so I come over, and essentially I'm just gonna take like a fight from here, and I want them to see me like leave, like to mentally reset. Like you're you're familiar with this pattern, I'm sure. Yo. No way that you think they're waiting at the KO dart again. But the the way that this pattern should like arise in your mind is teammate wedged into corner so like teammate here you can bait for them teammate here you can bait for them teammate there you can bait for them teammate here you can bait for them when they're wedged into the corner okay that's like when the alarm should fire wedged into corner baitable Okay, so the raise I wish I could be and the raise you should be able to be because you're better than me. The way you play these A retakes is you nade towards elbow and you satchel out towards hell and you just fight the hell guy. And ideally, by the you kill the hell guy, you get a gun and you can fight. Um, you just take hell control and you do it very quickly and explosively. With the judge, it'll secure the hell control better. But of course, um, like the fight, if they're not hell, you're in more trouble. Uh, but even then, like just satchel close to the wall. This is the routing you want to take, and you do it faster. Bro, I actually think it's just like your phrase is just not there. Like, this VOD isn't you. What's your. <laughs> yeah. What's your overall? Like, I want to see a higher sample size. But, uh. Yeah. That's a big sample size. It's like you don't have the same comfort that you have when you're on Jet. Like, I can relate to it, which is bad. I shouldn't be able to relate because I'm bad. Like, when I see a crazy Jet play, I feel like you're capable of it. When I see a crazy Raise play like this, for whatever reason, 
I don't have the impression that you're capable of that. Like what we just saw. It doesn't feel like your raise is capable of this. Yeah, I think you need to hit the books. If you want to play raise on this map, and I wouldn't blame you if you do, I think you should. If you're like trying to become a, a scrim player or a, like a duelist main, you need to be able to play this guy. You need to watch a lot more. Specifically, hunt for retakes and sight hits and learn his satchels on all of them. Oh, this is a perfect example, though. Are you learning for this? Trying to avoid playing retake? I'm just specifically looking for the scenarios where you struggle. Right here, for example. Like, you're never doing this. You're never doing that. But you need to start doing that in the right scenarios. There's also a similar scenario Um, I will try to demonstrate. Where if you're, like, playing rafters and you stuff them main, like, they try to come out and you own them. There's like a Satchel similar... Up. Oh my goodness. Not like that. But there's a Satchel similar up. routing here Satchel where you, you come up ramps like this behind them. You've probably seen, but it feels like you would never do. Boom, boom, boom. I'll keep that note there. I think we should just work on your raise. I'm not going to lie. I think you should bring raise VOD next time too. Boop, boop, boop. Raise routing on site hits slash retake slash holds. With satchels is very complicated. Scrub through hella ding vods and pause whenever you see his satchel count move from two to zero quickly. Anything he does that you can't replicate easily, grind it. This is like the pattern. You just scroll through his vods like I was doing. Let me pick another one. You just look at his satchel count at the bottom. Damn, we're at two. We're at zero right there. What happened? Let's watch. All right, you can do that. Let's keep watching. We're at two. We're at zero. What happened? You can do that, but do you do that? And so if you don't, then maybe do it. Like practice it in a custom. Because he's going... I don't think I saw this routing from you. He's specifically coming over here. Close elbow. Somebody's on site. Bet. Two satchels. Oh, we got zero. What happened? You can do that. No problem. Keep watching. And eventually you're going to find one that's like, you can't do it easily. You basically have to be able to do most of what he does. So just watch the double satchels and do them. Like here, is he starting gun out? Yeah. So he did this one with gun out at the start. That, that does change the momentum you gain. So make sure you can do it with gun out. Because this is what you're missing. You don't have enough options in your mind. You just have to watch a ton of these and learn what is possible. That's easy enough. But it's specifically these crazy double satchels he's doing where he's ending up in places you'd never end up in. Like the one where he's coming over here on the cypher and ending up behind this box. Like, I'm still not clean on that. I'm going to practice this one more. I'm playing here. Like, we would have spotted that one and you should grind that out. You need to learn these. On site holds, retakes, and site hits. You have everything else good. Your mid rounding, I love it. Your pre rounding is banger. Your game sense is good. Like, there's a bit of more we could be doing with baiting, but I don't want to put that on your plate right now. I think you need to you need to become like him with the raise routing. You're lacking in this one particular area.